Hi, everyone. My name is Paraj, and today I'll be presenting a flash talk on how structured random receptive fields enable informative sensory encodings. So let's begin. Receptive fields are a classical way in which we describe how sensory neurons encode inputs. But oftentimes, we think of sensory neurons as a linear nonlinear machine. Given an input x, every neuron has its own receptive field, a linear filter w. It applies it to the input as w transpose x. Then it applies a nonlinear transform sigma on that result. And that is the neuron's uh, input representation that is used uh, for some downstream tasks. Uh, we get receptive fields of neurons from experimental recordings, and we build models of them. Traditional receptive field models, they fit distinct parameters for individual receptive fields. So for every neuron, we have distinct set of parameters. And moreover, they're deterministic and can't capture the full variability seen in real experimental data. So in this work, we propose to describe receptive fields as random samples from special distributions. And this is gonna allow us to model entire populations of receptive fields with few interpretable parameters. We can capture both structure and variability seen in real data sets. And moreover, it's gonna allow us to understand sensor representation mathematically. So in this work, we model receptive fields as samples from distributions called Gaussian processes. So every receptive field W is a random sample from a Gaussian process. Now, what a Gaussian process is, it's just a way to sample, to randomly sample functions. And the kinds of functions you end up sampling is determined mostly by the covariance function C. So here's an example. Consider this covariance structure. Uh, the Notice that uh, here we have this smoothness parameter L that we can tweak. So if I make my L large, I'm gonna end up sampling smooth functions. And then if I make my parameter L small, I'm gonna end up sampling rough functions. So in this way, um, GPs allow us to sample functions. And so what we're gonna do is going to, is, is construct uh, co covariance functions with parameters such that when we sample their corresponding GPs, we're gonna get realistic looking receptor fields. So here we show that a Gaussian process model of primary visual cortex V1 produces realistic receptor fields. So we're modeling the receptive fields of simple cells in V1. On the left, I'm showing you some example receptive fields. So here are six examples at the top. Notice that uh, these receptive fields have distinct excitatory and inhibitory regions. They're localized to some space in the visual field and they are selective to orientation and spatial frequency. Now at the bottom, I'm showing examples from some receptive fields sampled from our model. And they actually look quite similar visually to the data. And then on the right, I'm showing you the covariance functions that I, that I get uh, from these receptive fields. So here uh, is the one we get from, from the data. So this is a covariance function from 8,000 neurons recorded from mice. And then here is the corresponding uh, covariance function from the model. And they look very similar. And moreover, the principal values and the principal components between the data and model also match. And these are PCs and PVs of the covariance matrices we saw earlier. So on the left are the principal values. On the x-axis are is the index, and on the y-axis is the magnitude. So as you can see, the blue data curve and the red model curve match quite well. And we also have the analytical closed form of these principal values in salmon, and that actually matches the data quite well. And and that is because uh, more of a of a numerical discretization issue rather than a mathematical issue. And on the right, we have the principal components. And notice that the data in the model also match quite well here. And then uh, on the bottom, we have the analytical form and they're much smoother because we're able to sample using a much finer grid. And they also look very similar, the data in the model. And this approach actually gives us a lot of theoretical insights on sensor representation. In particular, we find that sensor neurons, they perform a randomized way of the transform on their inputs. So to be precise, your, your neural representation H, which is W transpose X, a, all that is, is you take your input X, you transform that into a new basis using this matrix P, and then you hit that with a white noise vector. So a randomized change of basis. And actually from our model, we can derive what the new basis is, and it turns out to be the Hermite wavelet basis. And we know 
uh, uh, that Hermit Wavelet basis are actually quite good uh, to represent image inputs from uh, the image processing literature. We know that uh, wavelet encoding, it filters out high frequency components like noise from the signal and aids learning. So we dem demonstrate that here empirically on some example tasks. So we compare one hidden layer neural networks with unstructured receptive fields versus, uh, so just think of white noise, versus these V1 inspired structured receptive fields, right? uh, randomly sampled from, from these GPs. Uh, and so on the left, we show the performance on MNIST example. So on the x-axis, it's your hidden layer width, and on the y-axis, it's your test error. And so here, we can see that the blue curve is lower than the orange curve. And what that means is that for the same number of hidden neurons, you're able to perform much better uh, compared to these unstructured weights. And on the right, we have uh, we showed performance on MNIST again, but on a two-shot setting where we only have five samples per class. So uh, here again, the blue curve is lower than the orange curve. And again, what that means is uh, you are able to learn much better despite having fewer examples uh, from, from fewer hidden neurons. And so the conclusion is that the inductive bias uh, from these V1 type receptive fields um, allows neural networks to uh, be more efficient um, in learning, whether that means learning using fewer hidden neurons or fewer examples. And all the other experimental parameters uh, during training uh, are comparable between, uh, you know, between these uh, two networks. So to conclude, uh, we model receptive fields as random samples from distributions, particularly the Gaussian processes. We showed that this approach can model receptive field data quite well. We can derive the input representation used by sensor neurons, that is a randomized wavelet transform. And we showed that this transform can aid learning using fewer neurons and training examples on artificial tasks. So if you like that work, check out our preprint on our archive, by archive. There, we actually generalize this to another sensory modality, the insect mechanosensors. We give you the modeling task and details. We connect all these ideas to deep learning theory. We show implications for time series tasks and so much more. Thank you for listening.